I really thought, brother, as we were watching Sunday Night Football go down, I don't know why I went full Hulk Hogan, brother, uh, but I, I really felt like when I was I was watching the Sunday Night game, I thought, man, we're going to be able to start this thing early. This thing's a blowout. Yeah. Like the 49ers are taking care of business. They were absolutely destroying the Cowboys until just like they have all year, they sort of took the foot off the gas in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. The Cowboys made a huge comeback. This thing got tight. San Francisco gets a big win. And if you look at this as like a microcosm of both teams in a bad way, we saw the worst of both teams through some of this game that, you know, like you said, that the 49ers just leaving the back door wide open. Hey, come on in. You want to steal a win? You can come grab it. And the Cowboys and specifically Dak Prescott saying, no, nah, we're good. We don't need that tonight. Uh, they just had a disastrous third quarter where they got nothing going and a halftime lead turned into a 17 point deficit and seemingly in a blink of an eye. It was like, you just looked up and you're like, whoa, what, what happened to this game? All of a sudden, it's a blowout. They rally. Look, I, I think Dak Prescott's one of those guys, and I, I wrote about this. He, it's almost like Tony Romo, where just because he's a Cowboys quarterback, he's just going to always get more criticism than he deserves. He's a very good quarterback. Everybody likes just piling on him for whatever reason. This season, he deserves his criticism. He is now the highest paid player in NFL history. And he is not playing up to that standard or even close. He's not even playing up to his own standard of, of the rest of his career. His play has really fallen off. He is not good right now. He has had multiple interceptions in four games already this year. He had a terrible interception in the third quarter this year, th this game, where I don't even know what he's seeing. And, and even th there's a pass late in the fourth quarter where Chris Collins was saying, what could he possibly be seeing? He just throws it to three 49ers players, and Fred Warner batted it down because he couldn't catch it. But it's just Prescott's not seeing anything well. He seems to be pressing. He does have a lot of help. It's CD and nobody else, really. But he is not playing well. And when you sign that check that's giving you $60 million a year, or you sign a contract that's giving you $60 million a year, you have to play to a certain standard, as Dak is nowhere near that standard. There's many things going wrong with the Cowboys fits. I get that. But a main reason is the highest paid player in the NFL is not playing anywhere near that. Uh, there's an element for me. We'll talk later about Kansas City and some of the Mahomes issues. But it's an element for me where as much as Mahomes at times this year has struggled, and we've been honest about that, what you know is that there are going to be one or two times in the game that Mahomes has the chance to save a drive, to save a play, to save a touchdown, and ultimately those are the things that save games. And that's what he does magically. That's what's so frustrating is Mahomes can have a bad game and still make the three or mm -hmm. four plays you have to make to win. What's frustrating is that Dak doesn't seem capable this year of making those three or four plays. And that, to me, is the wildest part of it because once this game gets close, it's like, all right, this game got close. Go out and make that play. Go out right. and be that Mahomes. Go out and have that moment. You don't have to do it every time. But, man, you got to do it a few times. And tonight was a perfect example. You're right. Like, there were a couple bad picks. There were a couple moments there that you're just scratching your head. And also, late in the game when this thing got close and you really just needed to find a way to make a play, Dak didn't do it for $60 million bucks. Absolutely. That's what you're getting paid to do. And not even just didn't do it. It was four and out with that bad – first out pass to, in triple coverage to nobody nobody wearing the star in his helmet it's just a it's one of those where you you look at that play and you're like what could you possibly be seeing on that play and that's what i thought about with the interception of the third quarter where you look at the replay and you're like there's at no point could you have thought that cd lamb was open for that and, and lenoir picks it off a great play but he's throwing directly into coverage so yes to get the ball back more than enough time on the clock. You're down 30 to 24. You, you need a touchdown. You're heating up on offense. You played well in the fourth quarter and then just go four and out. I, I mean, that's just kind of Dak season so far. And that's a Cowboy season so far where they just can't get out of their own way. I, I, I don't see this really turning around for them either. The schedule upcoming is really tough. They're not playing well on either side of the ball. Yes, they're going to get some guys back around Bland, Micah Parsons. That'll help the defense. Maybe you could salvage a couple wins here or there, but I just don't look at this as a team where it's like, all right, like the 49ers, I, I've just kind of assumed they're going to get it going. Maybe that's even wrong. I don't know. Cowboys, I don't assume that. I, I just think this is kind of who you are. You're a very mediocre football team. Yeah, C.D. Lamb went off. Dak got the ball to C.D. Lamb and no one else, and they lost the game. And that that's just the fact, right? George Kittle went off for the 49ers on National Tight End Day, which I still don't know why we're trying to make a thing. Uh, but Kittle goes off. 
Brock Purdy plays well enough. San Francisco gets a win. Uh, but I, you're right. Like the, the maddening thing about this is that I think what we're actually learning is this is who these two teams are now, right? Like San yeah. Francisco's four and four, devastated by injuries, but they're still in this thing. They're still in the thick of this thing somehow, some way. It might not always be pretty, but they're still in the thick of this thing. The Cowboys are three and four, and that feels about right. Like three and four is where you think of a team that's not bad enough to just make you want to just give up, but they're not good enough to give you any faith. And that's a pretty good way to describe the way the Cowboys are playing right now. Again, when they got the ball back down six late in the game, I don't know about you, but I never really thought that they were going to get that done. This just hasn't been this team all year. They've they've had stretches of like 10 minutes or so of gameplay where they've looked good, but then it, that's about it. It's just very, very disjointed for them. What do you think of the Niners? Though? I, I don't. I still don't know what to make of the Niners. I mean, they have another injury tonight. Jordan Mason goes down. Isaac Randall played very well in his, his, his place, but... I just wonder, like, is this team ever really going to get on a roll? They they were really sloppy in the first half, didn't look very good, trailed at halftime, had basically one good quarter. That was good enough to win the game, but three of the four quarters yeah, tonight, the San Francisco 49ers were good. You just can't get on a roll when you're down to your third string running back. Yeah, and that's fair. When, you know, Debo's got a rib injury at one point in this game, too, yep. and it's like, you no, know, you, coming yeah. off a pneumonia. It's just, it was, there's nothing. When all of a sudden you're looking around saying, well, Ricky Pearsall has got to be our wide receiver one. Like, that's just not what anybody – I, no, I, I, yeah. I think the 49ers are just trying to tread water and see if they can actually get healthy. I'm not sure they'll ever get healthy. This, feel, this feels like a season that's going to be lost for them. But at least they're treading wa- water and trying. And at least I can look and see, hey, these are the reasons it, it isn't going well. I can, I can say that for the 49ers as opposed to Dallas. And the NFC West is just so bad, they're not running away. Uh, they, like, nobody has run away from the 49ers. There's no stress there. Nobody. The Seattle Seahawks have not made life tough on the San Francisco 49ers. Maybe the Rams can. I don't know. But uh, it just seems like with all these injuries, with all these issues the 49ers have, here we are. They're four and four. They're probably going to win the division, and then they're going to be a team that wherever they slot in seating wise, if they're relatively healthy by that point, they're not going to be a team anybody wants to play. 